In this final episode of the AE Juice Premiere course, we're talking all about exporting, more precisely how to export specific parts of your videos, how to batch export and the best export settings for YouTube. So let's get into it. So let's just begin with the basics. How do you get your video to export? So this is the video that I want to export. So there's two ways of going into export. You can either go up into file, scrolling down to export and selecting media. Or alternatively, you can do the keyboard shortcut, which is command and M. And as you can see, this is the export settings window. So let's just go over to the right and let's have a look at the export settings. So you can either match the sequence settings by selecting this box and all of these settings are going to get grayed out. So we'll uncheck that for now. First up, we're going to have a look at format. Now you've got all of these different formats here. And typically if you're going for a high export, then you're going to want to select QuickTime. And then of course you've got your preset here. And if you're doing a high export, you're going to be looking at an Apple ProRes 422 HQ or an Apple ProRes 422. But if you're exporting for YouTube, then you're going to want a more compressed export. So in that case, you would change your format from QuickTime to H.264 or a HEVC, which is a H.265. But we'll select H.264 because that is the most universal compressed format. Then your preset can just be match source, high bitrate. Next up, you can add some comments onto this export if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Output name. So we'll select this. And then you can just export this wherever you like. So we'll call this video one. We'll save that to our folder of choice. And then you've got export video, export audio. So if you uncheck that, it's only going to export the audio. If you uncheck the audio, it's only going to export the video. So make sure both are selected if you need both. Then this is just a summary of what we've got so far. So we'll move down and we'll go over to the effects tab. So if you haven't done any color grading here and you wanted to do it on export, you can just go ahead and add a LUT on export and you'll get a preview of what that looks like here. So if you wanted it to look like this on export, then all you have to do is just select that. But if you've done everything, just don't select that. Next, we've got SDR conform. We'll turn that off because we don't need that. We've got an image overlay. So if we turn this on, you can apply an image. So an image overlay is really useful if you wanted to add a watermark on export. So I'm just going to go into applied, select choose, and I'm just going to search for AE juice logo. I should bring this one up here. We'll open that and we'll position this in the bottom right. We'll increase the size of this. And then you can offset that to put it down into the bottom right corner. And of course, you can always move down into opacity as well and just reduce that if you wanted that to be not as noticeable. But don't worry about that for now. We'll just turn this off. Moving down, we've got a name overlay. And again, that's just going to add another overlay so you can add names onto your footage. So you can do source file name or you can do prefix and suffix only. You could do source file name without the extension, output file name output file name without extension. But again, we'll just turn that off. We've got a time code overlay. So this is just going to add a time code onto your video. This is very handy if you're sending rushes to somebody for amendments. You can place that wherever you want to place that. So you can have a generator time code or you can have the media file time code. We'll move down. We've got the time tuner. So adjusting the time tuner is going to change the duration of the video. So if you want this to be a 16 second video, then it's going to slow it down a little bit. And you can see the duration change down here. Of course, you've always got duration change and target duration as well. So if we go to target duration, let's say we want this to be 15 seconds, it will change accordingly. But we'll turn this off. Video limiter is just compression. A loudness normalization is regarding your audio. And then we'll move on to video. So this is where you're basically going to be wanting to spend most of your attention. So we'll just uncheck this. So you've got width and height of your video. So this is your output width and height. If you're doing a 1080p video, then this is going to be 1920 by 1080. Your frame rate is your frame rate of choice. So 25 in my example. Field order should be progressive. If you click progressive, then that's going to be a progressive scan. But if you click upper first or lower first, that is going to be interlaced and interlaced often doesn't look great and it isn't welcome. So we'll go progressive. Then the aspect ratio should be square pixels or whatever you want to select here. But I select square pixels. 
If you render at maximum depth, it's going to slow the export down, but it's going to be a slightly higher quality export. So I keep that selected. Encoding settings is your performance. So let's go to hardware encoding or software encoding. So this is just basically what do you want to lean into to export this? So do you want the graphics card to export this or would you rather the computer export this? It's doesn't really make much difference. It's just in terms of performance. Now we've got the bitrate settings. So we'll go bitrate encoding. You can either do a compressed bitrate or you can do a varied bitrate with one pass or two pass. So let's go CBR. And if you pull this down, so at the moment it's 0.19, you can see the estimated file size in 983 kilobytes. So really small. And if we pull this all the way up, it's to 50 and the estimated file size is now 96. So essentially, if you pull this all the way up to the highest number on the right, the video is going to look amazing, but it will be a bigger file size. And if you pull this all the way to the left, then the file size is going to be smaller, but the video will be compressed and it might look a bit ugly. So this is a little bit like a juggling act. Find the number where you're happy. So somewhere around 30 works in my example. Then you've got advanced settings. That's a keyframe distance. VR video. Video is not VR. Then you've got use maximum render quality. Again, that's similar to maximum bit depth. It's just going to give us more quality. Use previews, proxies, render alpha channel only. Set start time, import into projects. That's all fine. And you've got your time interpolation. So you've got frame sampling, frame blending, optical flow. It's always a best practice to select frame sampling, but frame blending and optical flow are really handy if you're having trouble with flickering in your video. Next up, we've got audio. And again, we've got our audio format. So we've got AAC or MPEG. I select AAC. You've got sample rate. I'm going to set this to 48. Channels, stereo, mono or 5.1 Dolby. I'm going to select stereo. Audio quality high. Bitrate settings at the maximum 320 and then keep this at bitrate. Next, we've got the multiplexer. Just keep this as MP4. Captions, we haven't created any captions inside of Adobe Premiere, so we'll just leave that there. Then we've got publish, and you can either upload this to Adobe Creative Cloud, Adobe Stock, Behance, Facebook, FTP, Twitter, Vimeo, or YouTube. If you do that though, then you do have to select the box. You have to sign into your YouTube account, select the channel you want to upload it to, add the description, change the privacy to public, unlisted or private. And then you can delete the local file after you've uploaded it to YouTube. So that would delete it from your desktop and just keep it on YouTube. But typically I like to upload this independently because I have presets on YouTube that I like to use. And now this video is essentially ready for export. So if you were going to export this, all you have to do is just press the export button. But if you only wanted to export a specific part of the video, then there's two ways of doing this. You can use these markers here to select the specific part of the video that you want. And if you know the time codes of the in point and the out point, so let's say you want to start at three, you can go to this box here and search for three and then press in. And let's say you want to finish at around 10. Let's put 10 zero zero. Then we can put the output to here. And now we're only going to export the specific bit in the blue. Everything before and after will be left unexported. Of course, though, you don't have to do that way. There is another way if you cancel out of here you can use this selection tool here. So this box here to export only this specific section. So again, we'll go command M. And as you can see, we've got those lines there. So once you're happy with all of those export settings, you can just go ahead and press export. And that's just going to take a few seconds or a few minutes, or if it's a really large video, it might take a lot more time to export. And then you'll just find your video on your finder or in your documents, wherever you place that. But let's say you've got loads of different videos and you just want to export all of these at the same time, just batch export. How do you do that? Well, you're going to need to install Adobe Media Encoder in order to do this. So you just go through all of the same process with your sequence. And rather than pressing export, you're just going to press Q. So that's going to queue that up into Adobe Media Encoder. And there you go. Adobe Media Encoder has opened and we've got our first video there ready for export. Now we go back into Premiere, select the next video. Command M, adjust the settings and press Q. Then we'll go to our next composition, video two, Command M. We'll queue that for export. Then we'll go to this last one, Command M and press export. Now it's going to start with the video at the top and it's going to slowly work through until it hits the bottom. So if you've got this video, let's say you want this video to be exported first. You just drag that to the very top and this one will now be affected first. 
And of course, you can always go into all of these different settings and change the settings of all of these different exports inside Encoder rather than doing it in Premiere if you would rather it that way. Now, my media encoder looks a little bit slimmed down. If you open up encoder for the first time, then it might look a little bit like this. So as you can see, you've got the queue up here. You've got the encoding window. You've got some presets down here and then you've got your media browser here. But I don't need all of that. So I keep it to quite a fairly slimmed down workspace. But once you've added in all your videos to export, all you have to do then is just press play. And it's just going to slowly work through all of those videos and export videos one at a time. Batch exporting your videos through Adobe Media Encoder is really handy if you've got groups of videos that you need to export because rather than going back after each export and resetting it and pressing export on each new sequence, you just put them all into Encoder and Encoder is just going to work through them one by one. The great thing with Media Encoder as well is you don't have to run stuff through Premiere. You can just drop it directly into Encoder. So let's go into my Finder. Let's drop some random footage into Encoder. So we'll go Footage. We'll drop this random MXF file into Encoder. As you can see, it's going to take a second and now it's inside Encoder. So we'll drop this at the very top because we want this to be prioritized. And then we can go into our settings tab and we can basically change this from the MXF file into a H.264. And that's going to convert that MXF file into a H.264. So Encoder is really handy for one batch exporting, but it's also really handy at batch converting. So if you've got all of these MXF files, you need them all to be H.264 QuickTime files. You just drop them all in and then you just adjust the settings accordingly. But there you go. That is how you export your videos from Adobe Premiere Pro using Premiere's exporter. And that's how you do it using the batch encoder inside of Adobe Media Encoder. Now, Media Encoder is a separate program to Premiere, so you want to make sure that you install Media Encoder if you want to do your batch exporting. Media Encoder also works with Adobe After Effects, so if you've got a few different Adobe programs, then I would consider downloading Encoder because it does make your life so much easier when it comes to exporting your videos. And there you go. That is the last episode of the AE Juice Premiere Pro course now complete. Thank you ever so much for downloading and watching this series. We really do appreciate your support and hopefully this series was able to help you in one way or another. And hopefully it's going to make that step into Premiere much less intimidating. If you want to learn more about Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects or any of the AE Juice plugins and how they work with Premiere and After Effects, then we have a range of YouTube videos available on our YouTube channel. So thank you once again for your support and have fun inside of Adobe Premiere Pro editing your videos.